Praise God Church. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Amen. Naomba tuweze kusimama ili tuanze ibada hii. And I want to invite all of us who are in YouTube and Facebook this being our grand finale empowerment Wednesday and I believe each and every one of us has been blessed by the teachings that we've been having here. And this being the very last Wednesday of this year, I believe that we'll be more than blessed of the teachings and the praise and worship we have. New members of praise and worship coming from Bartholomew Nyari and I believe there will be a blessing to us. Napenda kuwakaribisheni nyote ambao mnatutazama kwa Facebook na YouTube na pia wale ambao wako hapa kanisani hapa ni St Philip's Church Jericho where God is real relevant and relational naomba twende mbele zake bwana kwa maombi Mungu na baba yetu wa mbinguni mara tena tumekuja mbele zako tunakushukuru kwa vile ambavyo umekuwa pamoja nasi umetulinda umetuhifadhi zaidi umetujalia tukaweza kukutanika mara tena Jumatano ambao ni ya kipekee. Jumatano ambayo tuna wingi wa matumaini ya kwamba utatembelea kila mmoja wetu kwa njia ya kipekee. Wale ambao wamefungua tunaomba kwamba utawepata kuwafungua. Wale ambao wamepoteza tumaini tunaomba baba mfalme utafanya tumaini yao iwe mpya. Sababu we ni Mungu ambaye unaweza na hakuna jambo ambalo ni ligumu kwako. Tunaweka mtumishi wa Mungu mkononi mwako ambaye umemjaza na kumjaza roho wako mtakatifu na kumwagilia mafuta wakati atakapo kuja kutunenea hapa. Tunaomba kwamba nyoo zetu zitakuwa tayari kupokea ujumbe huo. Na zaidi kuweza tunapo utafakari tuweze kutumia katika maisha yetu. Tunakaribisha wale ambao wanatuona kutoka mahali tofauti tofauti Tunaomba hata nao jinsi ambavyo tutabarikiwa tukiwa hapa katika hekalu yako hata nao mahali walipo utawabariki. Na sasa mfalme tunaalika roho wako mtakatifu apate kuchukua nafasi katika jumba hili ambalo linahitanishwa na mtumishi wako mtakatifu Filipo. Naanze pamoja nasi na endelee kuwa pamoja nasi hadi tutakapofika mwisho. Na hayo mfalme atakapojiri sifa na utukufu zitakuwa ni zako na kushukuru mfalme kwa hayo. Pokea sifa, pokea utukufu. Na ni katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunaomba hata na kuamini. Hebu na tumpigie Bwana makofi. Nataka kualika praise and worship ili waweze kuja kutufungulia ibada hii ya empowerment Wednesday. Praise and worship ni awamu yenu. Praise God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord? If you are happy to be in the house of the Lord, tufanye hivi Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Praise Jesus. It is a wonderful moment that we've just come to the house of the Lord. Kumwabudu, kumrudishia shukrani. Because of all that we know there is none to be compared to our God Almighty. Amen. And in these few moments I just want us to keep, to get our focus to God. Where you are, you are seated, you are standing, just let us focus to God who he is. Who he is to us. What he has done to us this year. Take a moment, just open up your mouth and give gratitude to God. Ebenezer, we exalt your name and we worship you. We honor and exalt thy name above all creation this evening. Receive all glory and honor, my King and my Savior. Because there is none who is worthy of your praise. There is none who is worthy of your adoration, my Lord. I exalt you and I live for you. I praise you, O oh Lord. I lift thy name above all good hope. I lift you above all good hope. I exalt you, my Redeemer. Thank you for keeping me, O Jehovah. 
Thank you for loving me, O Lord. Thank you for allowing us to come to your house and just to worship you. We don't take it for granted, O Lord, that we are standing this evening, O Jehovah, before your throne of grace and mercy, just to return glory and honor to you. We exalt your name, O Abba Father. We worship you. Blessed be your name.
Lord, your name, Redeemer. Yahweh is your name. Receive all glory. Receive all glory. Receive all glory. I worship you, Father. I exalt you, our Father. I lift your name above all creation. I lift your name, Jehovah. Jehovah is your name. Adonai is your name. Adonai is your name. Adonai is your name.
worship. Fill this room with worship unto our Lord God. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. He's worthy of all the adoration, oh God. We have no other God to worship but you, oh God. We have no other God for the protection of you, oh Jesus. We have seen you. We have tested of you, Lord. We have heard about you. situation, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship your name. Thank you, Jesus.
Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your praises in this place. Thank you, Lord, for your power that is reigning in this place. Thank you because, oh God, Father, we are not going to come out of this place the same. Because we are changed already. And Lord Almighty, all we are asking from you, oh God, is that we may encounter you today. Is that we may see you, Lord. That we may feel you, Lord. Let your aroma fill this place. This is your, our prayer unto you, Jesus. And Lord Almighty, as we continue, Lord, in this section, oh God, we pray, Lord, that your presence may go ahead of us. And it is in Jesus' name we pray, trusting and Amen. believing. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let us appreciate the presence of the Lord in this place. He's worthy. He's worthy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor there is a race that I must run. Tell your neighbor there is a race that I must run. There are victories to be won. So give me power, God.
A round of applause to the praise and worship team. I can't hear you louder. Again louder. And to our Lord and Savior, a round of applause. I want to invite our sister Caro. Caro, where are you? Kindly come and take us before the Lord as I invite the man of God to come and share the message this day that the Lord has made. Let us be upstanding as we just offer our sacrifice of prayer before our Lord. Sister Caro, kindly take us through. Sovereign Lord, we ascribe unto you the praise, the honor, and the glory that is due to you, God. We gather not in any other name but in the name of Jesus Christ. And there is power in that name. Father Lord, we subject ourselves to your Lordship as we sit at your feet. Lord, heavy things, deep things are being taught to us, Lord. And your word tells us that we are not to be ignorant about these things that we are about to be taught, Lord. I pray that you shall, you shall prompt us to take heed to the lessons that we will be taught. Help us to realize that you will hold us accountable. One day, one time, we'll stand before you and you will ask us what we did with the truths that were revealed to us by the power of the Holy Spirit, O oh God. And therefore, Lord, we take power and authority over every strong man that is assigned this charge to hinder your word from prospering, to hinder us from responding to your word. We take power and authority, King of glory, over every agent from the enemy's camp that would come here with a different motive. We only have one motive and one motive, Lord, to sit at your feet and to hear from you. Not from a human being, but you, Lord, Father of all souls, Father of all might. And so, Lord, we commit the servant of God, Reverend Pala, as he comes to share your word, Lord. Give him eloquence of speech. Give him boldness. Give him utterance, King of glory, in all that he will share with us, that it shall be you, Lord, that will do it. That as a pen in a writer's hand, Lord, you will use him. Even his tongue, his mouth will be sanctified for your work, O oh Lord. Spirit of God, we are not in a hurry in your presence. Times belong to you. Seasons belong to you and you have gathered us, Lord, that we may be able, Father, to be taught of you and leave this place a different people, an empowered people, O oh God. We know, Lord, that as we sit here, every one of us will be blessed because we came. So every wandering mind, we hold it captive. We subject it to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And this is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. And all God's children say, let's appreciate the Lord. A round of applause to a, to a man of God who has been freshly anointed, Reverend Pala. Kindly come and take us through. Praise the name of God. Good evening, everyone. God is good. And all the time. You know, one day I learned that uh, that is what many Christians say when they want to release tension. It works for me. It works perfectly. Like, God is good all the time. Huh? But it is true that our God is good all the time the time. Thank you so much Caro for those prayers. Uh, I have really battled with this uh, uh, topic that I want to share with us and it's look at it as a continuation of what I shared with you last week when we were talking about the millennium and so look at it as a continuation. Uh, attach it to the millennium. And so I want you to open your Bibles and uh, we will read Revelation chapter 20 from verse 11 to 15. Open your Bible with me and we will read Revelation chapter 20 verse 11 to 15. As you open your Bibles, my name is Pala Hosea. 
I serve at SK St. James and I am visiting here courtesy of an invitation by Reverend uh, Ameda and um, I'm blessed to be here and to join you for this particular evening service. Even at St. James we have one that's actually going on right now and so it's a privilege and honor that uh, Reverend Ameda would uh, invite me. I have worked with a friend and, uh, and, and a very close friend of mine, that is, that is Jemo. He's seated there. Uh, Jemo, you can arise and uh, just wave to people. And uh, Jemo is a very uh, close, close friend of mine. And uh, I, I was with him last week here and today also. So, Revelation chapter 20, from verse 11 to 15. Let us read together. It says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. And books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and heads gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and heads were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. And this is the word of the Lord. Father, may your, name, may your word be exalted in this place, O God, as we delve into it and think through it. Lord, will you speak to me, continue speaking to me, O God, even as you continue to speak to your people, O God. Remove me away from me, O God, and fill me with that which you want your people to get this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. And that is what John writes to us. Now, I want to, probably before I begin going into this word, I want to tell you, uh, I want to mention something. I don't know how many of you, you've ever gotten to a point in life that you asked yourself, why am I here? Why, why, why was I given birth to? Why, why am I around this place? Anyone? And you've battled with that question. All right. Ah, I can see a few hands, okay? If you haven't gotten there, I have news for you. It is coming. Utafika mali maisha ako, utajuliza kwa nini niko hapa? Are you just around to wake up and go through your day, or you are here for something particularly special, a purpose that is. People call it like that, all right? But also, I don't know how many of you are here who have ever battled with the question and asked yourself, how then does it end? All right? It is How many, anyone here? You've battled with that. Again, I see a few hands. Now, those are questions of purpose and destiny where it will all end. And we all struggle with that at one point in our lives. We constantly ask ourselves. I think at a very early age, people will ask themselves, who am I? Mini nani? And, and we go through that battle. You might not verbalize it, but there are people who, when they see you, they can see you struggling with, in finding an identity. And, and then as you grow older, you begin asking yourself, now that probably I know who, I'm, who I am, why am I here? What, what was I designed for? And then at the, as you grow much older, I think you begin asking yourself, then where does it end? Let me tell you, friends, the earlier you struggle with those questions, the better for you. You don't want to get to 65. And, and those are very bitter wazes. Have you ever seen bitter wazes? 
because they look at you and they see uh, what they missed. And so they cannot allow you to prosper. Alright? Now, the reason why I'm saying this, on this day that we are talking about judgment, is that if you look at all world religions, all world religions, they really try to answer those three questions. The questions of who a human being is, the question of what a human being is designed for, and the question of where does it all end? The question of destiny. And so, every religion in the world tries to offer a way out of those questions. And you will encounter certain religions that when they deal with matters of destiny, they will tell you that ukiishi maisha yako poa, utarudi kama mtu mpoa. Ukiishi maisha yako vibaya, uneza rudi kapanya. All right? And, and we were joking someday and saying, maybe ukikutana na paka usiko, all right? Okay, for those people who believe that, maybe ukikutana na paka usiko na waifkuze, na unawana tui na kuangalia hivi. It could be your uncle who was very bad, probably, I don't know. And we will make jokes about that. But there is this Christianity that offers us, I, I, personally, this is why I am a Christian. And, and this is why I've really been able to stand firm in my faith. Because as I battled with these questions, I have battled with these questions. As I battled with these questions, I see Christianity offering me perfect answers. When I asked who am I, the scripture reminds me that I am fearfully and wonderfully made in the image and likeness of God. That I am a child of God. And in John, Jesus calls me friend. And so, I have found my identity in Christ himself. In fact, working, I work a lot with teenagers. And in psychology, people say that the question that teenagers battle with is the question of who am I? I'm getting into this place where I want to challenge that and say probably the question should be whose are you? Because if you know whose you are, trust me, you will never battle with who you are. Amen? And so, beginning to challenge some of these things. And so Christianity offers me that answer. When I asked myself, why am I here? And I got to a point where I asked myself that. And the things that I did to find out, that's a story for another, another day. And Christ then tells me, you are here to exhibit praise for the Lord who created you in his image and likeness. To love him and to love like him. To serve humanity and find fulfillment in not only serving humanity, but serving God. And, and, and for me, that has been very key. To know that that is the main purpose why I am around here. To love my God and to love like he did. To serve him and serve his people. Whichever way that will be. And so, when I go to sleep, I sleep a very satisfied person. Then lastly, how does it all end? And that is why we are here. And the scriptures tell us how it's going to end. For us, I am not looking forward to coming up, to coming back like a lion. No. Neither am I looking, uh, 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 neither am I looking forward to attaining something they call nirvana. You know, the, uh, uh, like, it's, they call it godhood. No, I'm not looking forward to that. I am looking forward to a time that I will spend my time with God eternally. And so Christianity offers me that. It says, Pala, after you fight the battles of this world, after you live for what you've been designed for, trust me, you will appear before God and he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. And so, in light of this, 
the scriptures tell us that at the end of it all, there is going to be judgment. For me to be told that well done, good and faithful servant, I am looking forward to the righteous judgment of God. And he has promised that in his word. And this scares people. Do you know that they are so... Have you ever heard people saying that, hey, manze, your book is revelation, apana manze. You've heard people say that. Because they call it a scary book. Yet, it is not. Just like we can see Jesus in Genesis, we can see Jesus in Revelation. Just like we can see God's design in Habakkuk, we can see God's design in Revelation. And Revelation is the most comforting book because it is the book of the end and how it's going to be glorious and magnificent and it will end us to our eternal place. And I will encourage you to read it. And so John, here, he's been given a picture of what must happen in the end. Do you know that there are Christians who find it very easy to quote scriptures like, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you quote that left, right, and center. But no one, people fear quoting that there is a throne and there is a, a gracious God and is going to judge you by every deed that you lived for. No one quotes that. Because people look at it as a scary scripture. Yet, the Bible, the way it is, it reveals to us a glorious God. A God who loves his people. A righteous redeemer. And so, one day, there is going to be a judgment. And it is true. And no one of, none of you, me included, are going to escape it. Can you imagine? It's beautiful, right? No one is going to escape the judgment of God. And to live daily knowing that we cannot escape it is the most redeeming thing in our lives. And so, the judgment, the final judgment, this is something that will happen right at the end. The judgment of God. This is what will take place when Jesus returns to judge the living and the dead and also reward. Alright? Reward or punish those who will be brought on that, those who will be in his presence on that particular day. So, there is this day, my friends. There is this particular day. Man, skia, ata ukikama utakuwa mekufa, mtafufuliwa, because lazima muone yosiku. John writes and says, The sea gave up the dead that were in it. Hakuna kuhepa isiku. Ata ukufe aje, whichever way you go, my friend. It will not matter. We will all appear before a righteous God. And that's just the way it is. Kuna mtu aneza fikiria, amin takuwa ni mekufa. There is nothing like that because in every communion service, you say the words of the Nicene Creed and sometimes you also say the Apostles' Creed and you say that you believe that Jesus died and he rose again and he will come back in glory to do what? <laughs> Judge the living and the dead. So, ukikuwa alive, yo kitu bado hiko. Ukikuwa dead, mtafufuliwa hapo malimko, mface judgment. Hakuna mse anahepa hii story. Because the word of God must be fulfilled. And this is a reality. You know, you can meet many Christians who live like there will be no day like that one. Unaishi tu ni kama hakuta wai kuwa na siku kama hiyo. And John writes to us and says that and I saw the dead great and small 
standing before the throne. Alright? Can you see that picture? I saw the dead, great and small, and they were all there with the living. And they were before what? A throne. And God seated on the throne. He's seated on the throne. And he is ready to judge. And so, friends, the time of Christ's coming is not known when these things will happen. It is not known. And last week I told you that many people, given how they look at the millennium and how they interpret it, they can put dates. But let me tell you, no one knows. No one knows the time or the hour that the Son of Man will appear so that he can complete the task of judgment. And so, friends, the dead will be raised back to life to face judgment. John chapter 5 verse 38. And both humans and the angels, like it's written in the book of Jude, I think it's Jude 14, 15, that all these people will be brought together and people will be judged. And so, everyone will receive appropriate reward or punishment on that particular day. Do you hear me? Everyone, including Pala, we will receive a reward for those people who will be rewarded. For those people who will be punished, you will receive your punishment. And God is very clear. There is no black, it's not a gray area, it's very black and white. There will be punishment and there will be what? Reward. Let me repeat this. Friends, there will be punishment and there will be reward. And how you end up either being punished or rewarded on the judgment day of God really depends on how you choose to live your life today. It's that simple. And so everyone will receive an appropriate reward or punishment. And Revelation 20.14, it, it, uh, uh, John writes and says, uh, uh, then death and hate were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death, which means there is a first death. And the first death, nile utakufa. Ineza kuwa na cancer, ineza kuwa na accident, ineza, uneza kuwa tu umelala, alafu, uende, uh, gani ingine? Yes, I know you are thinking. <laughs> And, and that's the first death. And that one is the way of everyone. It is the way of killer mtu. We are all going to go through that. Why? Because of what happens in Genesis. God created us to live forever. But man decided, no, I don't want to live forever. That's what we were telling God in, in Eden. And then we disobeyed. Alright? And so there's going to be the second death. The second death that John writes to us about, and remember is, this has been revealed to him by God, is the final one. There is not going to be a third one. If you are expecting a third one, Paul Ekwako. Hakuna a third one. And so, John says, Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into what? The lake of fire. Now, I'm coming to talk about that. But I want to let you know that we must all go through the judgment of God. Because Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, it writes that it is appointed for a man to die and then face judgment. It is appointed. It's already been appointed that each of us will die once and then 
judgment. And so friends, it is a must that we must go through that. The other thing that I want you to know is that the day of judgment is fixed. Alright? It is fixed. And this is Acts chapter 17 verse 31. Probably I'll just read it real quick. Acts chapter 17 verse 31. Let me just open that real quick and read it. It says here that... Uh, For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. Can you imagine? That God has set aside, he has fixed a day for judgment. And he has proven this to us by raising his son Jesus Christ from the dead. That by the virtue that Jesus rose from the dead, then we know that the day of judgment will be there. And so friends, I want to mention to you something here. It says that anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire to go through the second death. And Jesus a lot of times talks about this in his many preachings. He says that those who call him Lord, Lord, one day they will appear before him and he will say, I never knew you. And they will be thrown out where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus himself also uh, narrates to us a story about Lazarus and the rich man. You've read that story, right? And he says that when the rich man died, he went to, to, to hell where the, the heat was intense and he actually asks for just a drop of water. And so it is going to happen. It is bound to happen. Now, John says that those whose names are not written in the book of life. Those are the ones that will be thrown into the lake of fire. And so it poses a very important question to us. Has your name been written, has your name been written in the book of life? In fact, it's called the Lamb's Book of Life. And let me tell you, there are so many prophets who wrote about these things. Daniel writes about it in Daniel chapter 7. He repeats it in, in Daniel chapter 12 and 14. He talks about the things that must happen during the end of days. Now, go and, go and research the, the number of years between Daniel and Jesus. Between Daniel writing chapter 7 and Jesus writing Matthew 24. Because the whole of Matthew 24, Jesus tells us what must happen in the last days. He talks about it very plainly. And he tells us how painful it will be. He tells us of the anguish, the confusion that will be there. And he narrates it perfectly. And there are so many people who've written about it. David actually writes about the judgment of God in Psalm chapter 2. He writes about it there. Isaiah also writes about it. And so, if the prophets wrote about it, then we do not have a choice. We do not even have the privilege of doubting that it will take place. And so, friends... I want you to know that the judgment of God will take place. Now, how will it take place? You, how many of you here have sung Mataifayote, Atakusanyika, Mbelezake, Buana, Mokozi? Now, watakuwa wanafanya nini? Simseme. Watakuwa wanafanya? Wanalia. Wanalia aje? 
Nyinyi mnaimba za hiyo umefunga macho umeinua mkono. It's a worship song. See praise and worship. You know one of the interesting things is that the first songs are called praise songs and then the slow ones are called <laughs> the worship songs. So hiyo wanasema ni worship song. Mataifa yote yatakusanyika. Mbele zake Bwana Mokozi. Na hiyo siku haitakuwa siku ya kucheka. My friends, right now God is seated on his throne. He's seated. He's seated on his throne. Oh. He's just seated like this looking at the sons of men doing things. He sees a, somebody here. Maybe your name is Elijah. How you wake up in the morning. And zile vitu unafanya fanya kwa secret. Anaziona zote. Amekaa tu. Ametulia. Anajina huo. Hapo mali aweka. He's seated. And he's seeing things happening. He's seeing how people are robbing each other. He's seeing how people are lying to each other. He's seeing how guys are giving up on him. He's seeing all that. But let me tell you, one day he will rise in authority and he will judge. He will rise from his seat. Siku ya judgment akutakuwa na kukaa. Itakuwa job. Probably atafunga hivi hata nini yake. Shati. Sema sasa bus. Sasa kazi imeisha sasa. Can I tell you something? I don't know where that verse is, but it's in Revelation. If you find it, please just shout it. It talks about the saints who died because of their faith. And they are un- they, I think they are under the, the, the seat of God. And they are crying day and night and telling God until when their blood. It says that their blood is wailing to God and asking until when? Until when? When shall you recompense us? When shall you avenge for us? And God tells them, Tulie ni tu hapo. Mambo bado. And then, when you read Hebrews chapter 11, I think it is the last verse. It says, after telling us how people struggled in faith, how some of them were sown into two, how some of them were vagabonds, how some of them suffered because of faith. It says that these people, they did not receive the promise. Why? Because God intended that them, together with us, we must all be glorified. You've read that. Kama hiyo verse jawai kukusikia. We ni mtu bure sana. Can you imagine? Hebrews 11 talks about Enoch who walked with God and disappeared. Some people like Pala, we are walking with God, we've not even disappeared. Enoch walked with God and he was no more. Then came Abraham, the father of faith, walked with God, he died. The patriarchs followed. The prophets they went through moments of pain, paying for their faith. Then came the time of the church, the great persecutions. These people, some of them were, 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 were crucified upside down. Some of them were impelled because of their faith. They looked at Christ and said, how can I deny my God after he has died for me and rescued me from death and they were killed by the sword. Some of them were thrown inside the arenas and lions were released and they were mauled. And the scriptures in Hebrews record that these people, they are waiting for you and me so that together we might, we should be glorified. Like, wewe mwenye umekapo unaniangalia, David is waiting for you. We hata umeitua man after God's own heart. Na umeka David anakungoja. Ndiyo, wewe na yeye mkue glorified. Daniel is waiting for you. You th- I'm not making this stuff up. I need to read it so that where's the book of Hebrews? I need to read this for you so that you get it. Yes. 
Hebrews chapter 11 verse 39 it says, This were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us will they be made perfect. Abraham, Abraham anakungoja, ambia rafiki yako hapa Abraham anakungoja wewe. Imagine, wewe umeka Abraham. We unajua vitu Abraham alipitia, umemweka. Sindio hapa. So that together we might be made perfect on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment. That's when it's going to happen. The Lord has provided time. We are enjoying time. And he's seated at his throne. And all these people are waiting for him. Now, John writes that those whose names were written in the book of life. So, there is a book of life. Aha! I don't know how big that book is. Sijuka and writing ya mungu ni ndogo ama kubo. I do not know. Maybe it's a book this size. Probably. Or maybe it's this size. Or maybe, hata uko heaven, already wako na tablets. Watakuwa tu wana google jina yako hapo. Kama hiko, out. I don't know. I mean, anything could happen. But the thing is, there is a book of records. There is a book of records. Now, the pe- who are these people who are in the book of life? Probably you are there, you are asking yourself that question. I want to tell you that those people whose names are written in the book of life are those that have realized that one day Jesus was speaking. I think it's in John 14. Yes, somewhere there about. And he's telling the, the, his listeners that, hey people, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through the Lamb's book of life has the names of those people who have accepted to trade their life for the life of Christ. Because that is what happens when you get born again. You trade everything that you are for all that he is. Everything that you know for everything that he knows. Your life for his life. And when that happens, your name is keyed in the book of life. It has nothing to do with showing up to church on Sunday. Ati, because unakujanga kanisa, ati sa unafikiria jinako. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing with volunteering. You can volunteer all your life. You, all, all your life, you can do that. It's very good. But bad for you at the end. It's terrible. You can be jumping and singing here. And your name is not in the book of life. My friend, what are two kuruka ruka apa? And that will join what wengine. Let me tell you, unless you have traded your life for his life, that's when your name will be in the book of life. And these books will be opened. John says, I will read that again. John writes and says, Then I saw what? Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. All right? Verse 12. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. Friends, for us to be sure of our destiny. We have no other way. But to desire. That our names be written. In the Lamb's book of life. And do you know what? After John writing these words to us. When you begin to read John chapter 20. John 21. John gives us another picture. He begins to talk about the new heavens. And the new earth. 
he begins to talk about the new Jerusalem where everyone whose name is in the book of life will spend eternity with Christ. When I was in Sunday school, back, back then, there is a song that our Sunday school teacher used to sing. It says, Ndani ya moyo wangu nao na Jerusalem. Have you sung that song? Remember your imbo? Ndani ya moyo wangu nao na Jerusalem. Ndani ya moyo wangu na Jerusalem. So you've sung that song. You know that song will remind us of a holy city that was waiting for us. Interestingly, there's a heat that did rounds all over the place and it's called what? Jerusalem. Have you interacted with the lyrics of, the, of, the, of, of that song? Anyone? Umesoma lyrics. Ama wewe tu ni tundu na marutin dance hapa. Shuali. Kwa nini wa kristo mko hivi? Simu investigate vitu. Huh? That song, Jerusalem, KG and that other lady, nom, nom something, they are singing about Jerusalem and they are saying, I want to be there. Do not leave me behind. Friends, John says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. There will be no more. See, we've just read that there will be the second death. Now, for those people whose names are in the Lamb's book of life, getting into Jerus the new Jerusalem, there will be no more and then he will wipe, uh, yeah, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. God has finished his work. Now people can enjoy being in his presence. And the judgment will be the final blow. In, during the judgment, God will be saying, Baba, it is over. Let us now enter into a new order of things. And friends, the justice we can do to ourselves is to desire that we will be part of that new order of things. We will be part of it. That should be your desire. That after all is said and done, you will be in this place where God says every tear will be wiped away. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Can you imagine such a world? And the glory of God will be our light. Now, friends, I don't know if you've taken time to think about this place, but a lot of times I just fantasize about it. I know there are some of us who are looking forward to this place where we'll just be worshiping day and night, casting down our crowns, and just saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And if you, if you sit down with a worship leader, we'll come deep. Atakwambia manze heaven tutakwatu tuna worship. Because that's what his heart is crying for. Some of us who, who, whose heart yearn for just great moments with people, we look at that heaven like that. We look at a, at a time when everything, everything has been reset back to their default setting. You know, one day I was at a camp and it was um, 
we were overlooking the lake. And it was in the evening and we were seeing a very beautiful sunset. And the person who was seated next to me asked me, Pala, I can see you enjoying a mango. I was actually eating a mango as I watched the sunset. And do you like the sunset? And I said, yes. And he said, Kama hiyo maembe unakula sahi came from a cast ground. Na unayenjoy hivo. Can you imagine ile maembe tutakula heaven? Hidyo itakua inatestaje. He says, Pala, if you are enjoying this beautiful sunset, and it is a sunset that's out, happening out of a chaotic order, yet it is still beautiful. Can you imagine the sunsets we will have in heaven? Huh? I know some of you don't look at heaven like that. Me, me I've had time to just imagine. And I don't think imagine, imagining heaven like that will bar me from entering there. Yes, your spirits are as in your I, people can say that. Let me tell you, as I come to a close, when I got born again, <laughs> when I got born again, form two, 20, no, 2000 and, 2000 and, uh, and, and three, yeah, 2003 I was in form two. And I got born again on 18th May at 10.35. I told you last week, me have grown up in the Tukutendereza, and Tukutendereza, you must have your facts right. <laughs> and let me tell you, the fire that was in me, I wanted everyone to get born again. Let me tell you, akuna mission nilikuwa na baki nyuma, because what I had experienced, the burden that had been lifted, I loved it. And I wanted everyone to experience that. And I talked, to, I talked about salvation without caring whether you are born again or not born again. Me, I will just share the gospel. Even when we were given time to introduce ourselves, we turned it into a preaching. I don't know if you've met people like that. Wanambiwa si useme jina yako tu ni nani. Anasema jina yake. Alafu anaza kubiri hapo. That was me back then. And so I took part in this mission in Nyanza. And we used to be grouped two by two. And so we end up going door to door, door to door and speaking about the gospel. And I end up in this house of a very old mama. She was very old. And I got into that place. Alikuwa na chagua maindi. And there was this deep sense of compassion. And I felt like surely, uyu akikufa sahi, ataambia mungu nini? You know, what will he tell God? If she's not given her life to Christ. And I greeted her and began sharing the fire in me. And I explained the gospel to her. And she was just listening. And that's 2003. I explained. I was burning. I told her all have fallen short of the glory of God because of sin. Mama, you don't know when death is coming. You could go today or tomorrow. But I want you to spend eternity with Jesus. Ninkisha maliza kuongea everything. I told her, now bring your hands. I want to pray you into heaven. And I began to put my hands like this. And she said, my son, before you pray, give me a minute. And I told her, it's okay. Take all the time. Umalizane na dunia. Because bingu in kungoja. And she said, it's okay. She told me, my son, in 1926, I was going kuchota maji. And I heard someone in a heart shouting, come, buy honey 
for free. Come and buy without money. You know that scripture? It's in Isaiah. And I asked myself, now that lady is telling me, and I asked myself, Asali siyo kitu tunapata hapa kwa uraisi. Huyu ni nani anasema twende tununue bila pesa? Na unanunuaje bila pesa? So she went into that room. And that is the day she gave her life to Christ. Mimi na kimbele mbele yangu yote. And she told me this. And this is why I remember that story. She told me, God has revealed to me the picture of heaven. Because he says that we will not hunger. To her, she said, she sees this heaven when she will just be walking. And when she's hungry, she will pick the grass and she will eat and it will satisfy her. And she explained to me how the grass will taste. One of the words I remember there will be mili mili. I don't know. I can't explain that to you. But it's something nice. And she told me, let me pray for you. Safari kondefu. And she prayed for me. The hunter has now become the hunted. Let me tell you. <laughs> you know, you can laugh about these things. But that does not negate the fact that God's judgment is coming. And I want to tell you, if you are there, and you see that, yani, mimi nezataka, kwa your lamb's book of life, because it's there, see, it's written. Your lamb's book of life, nezataka tu jinangu ikwe hapo. And it is, it is not complicated, you know, sometimes we really complicate this thing. It is just accepting and telling Lord, I cannot save myself from the wages of sin, which is death. Lord, would you give me life? Just give me life. And boom! Christ offers you life. So that one day, when we stand before the throne of judgment of God, Matthew 12, 36 says, Jesus is talking and saying, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they spoke. We will account. We will give an account. Romans 14, 12 says, So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. Matthew 12, 36 to 37, I tell you, this is Jesus. On the day of judgment, people will give account of every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. This is Jesus talking. Because he's the one who will be seated on the throne seat of judgment. And so I want you to just bow your heads, all right? And I want you to ask yourself questions. Who are you? And right now the Spirit of God is here to tell you that you belong to Christ. And if you ask, why am I here? The Spirit of God is here to tell you, you're here because God wants you to exhibit His praises. And if you're then asking yourself, then when will it end? To be reminded by the Spirit of God that there will be a judgment. And what account do you want to give on that particular day? And if you're there, I want you to boldly stand and just tell the Lord, give me life. Lord, give me life. 
Give me life, oh God. And I dare you to make that bold move. If you're there and you want life that comes from Jesus, I want to ask you, rise up on your feet. I will not call you here. From where you are, we will pray with you there. Maybe you're there and you want to recommit your life to Christ and tell Christ, I had lost it, but I want to come back. Lord, will you receive me again? This is also a wonderful time. You can actually do that. So can I pray with those two people who say, Lord, I want life, and someone else who is saying, Lord, I am recommitting back to you. Thank you so much. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made. And it's all about you. It's all about say I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. If you're there, you're saying, I want life. Lord, I want to recommit. I can see three people standing. If you're there, I do not want you to leave. I don't want to leave you behind. It is time. This is the time. Oh, it's all Say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back to you. I would just like to ask Revameda to come and pray for you. And it's all about this is our prayer that we are going back to the heart of worship. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. that you've placed in our hearts O oh Lord and more particularly to your servants that are standing that by the help of the Holy Spirit they've been able to discover that they are missing and losing quite a lot as far as life is concerned and Lord they are making a decision in their lives tonight to commit themselves to you and some recommitting and rededicating their lives to you O oh Lord Gracious Savior, I pray, Jehovah Father, that you may receive them as your children, O Lord. And just as you've told us in this book of life, Jehovah, you may be able to include their names in the name of Jesus. Almighty and everlasting Father, we rise against any kind of pressure, be it in form of life experiences or even in form of spirits that would pull them back, O God, that shall not prosper. In the name of Jesus, we declare that nothing is going to snatch them from your hands, O God, but they shall remain steadfast, O God, in your word and in the fellowship and in prayer, that all through the days of their lives, Jehovah, they would remain connected with you in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that the journey 
that they are starting today O oh God shall they continue being strengthened by thy spirit that all the days of their lives Jehovah they shall remain firm in this work of faith we also pray Lord for the rest of us Jehovah that are already given their lives to Christ that Lord you may also strengthen us in this journey that none of us is going to grow weary oh Lord we are living in a world that is crooked a world oh God that is just disorderly but we pray that you are going to hold us tight in this faith that all of us Jehovah Father shall be partakers of the reward that you are going to give on the day of judgment Lord God Almighty cleanse us from every unrighteousness oh God we pray Jehovah Father that you pardon us that you show us your mercy your grace that is sufficient Lord may read be upon each and every one of us that today tonight Lord we are starting a fresh journey with you and it's a journey that we are looking forward to having a great moment with you O oh Lord eternally rejoicing in your presence in the name of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit Amen, Amen, Amen. Let's give a mighty clap to the Lord. That is so lovely. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I think that the readers would help me. Those who are standing, please you can be able to give your name so that we can be able to do a follow-up on the same. So at this point, I know our time is far much gone, but we usually do our offer tree. I will just invite the priest to sing us a song as we give the offer tree. After that, we are going to have the uh, the benediction and I will just uh, one or two announcements and then we shall be able to go home. How has it been since we started the empowerment Wednesday? How has it been? Awesome. Next day it can only get better I tell you. So we are going to have a moment to worship the Lord with our offerings and then thereafter we shall be able to make a few announcements and then we'll pray. Chotaka ni we ni we we tu na chotaka ni we ni we we tu aja ya moyo wangu ni Yesu tu aja ya moyo
This indeed was the grand finale of the Empowerment Wednesdays this year. And I believe each and every one of us has been able to receive that message that was brought by the man of God, Reverend Pala. There was a text that uh, he alluded to of saints praying and asking God for recompense. It's Revelation chapter 6, verse 10. Hile alisema, alisema, if you're hearing, alisema nini? Alisema, amkumbuki, alisema, wewe ni? Bure sana. I want to make a few announcements. Uh, on the 25th, we'll have one service uh, together with the first of next year. God being our helper, we'll have one service. And then we'll have a crossover night vigil, but you already know the, the government protocols and the, and the curfew. But we'll have it in a different way. There will be a virtual service, crossover service. So we are inviting all of us to tune in in YouTube and Facebook. You be, further details will be provided to us as we get to that date. So I just want to wish you, those who are going, will be going home, uh, a safe travel and a Merry Christmas. And a happy new year. The next Wednesday empowerment will next year's Wednesday empowerment will start in the second Wednesday of New Year. 13th, 13th of January 2021. That's when we resume back with other empowerment Wednesdays. So may God bless you and may God keep you in his under his shadows. I want to now give it to Mchungaji for the benediction and the prayer for the offering. Yes, Let's appreciate our brother Charles for leading as well. So, so as, as he has said, we'll be starting on the 13th, 13th of January. But that day, will have time to worship and I'll be teaching briefly on fasting because next year we are going to do a 21 days fast which will be starting on the 14th of January so on that 13th please come I'll be teaching people on how to fast because I don't want casualties I will, I will be explaining different kinds of fasting what you need to put into consideration and all that then on the 14th we'll be starting the fast and every Wednesday, for the three Wednesdays, that is the 20th, 27th, and 3rd of February. All those Wednesdays, we'll be meeting here in the evening just to pray. So we'll be fasting all through the week. we we'll meet on Wednesday to have time to pray as we conclude the first week. Then we start the second week. There will only be three weeks uh, for 21-day fast. That fast is very unique. I call it a Daniel fast. I'll be giving more details on that on the 13th. And that is why you must come back uh, very fast so that you don't miss it. Stakangi watu wapewe story. I want you to capture it by yourself. Is that okay? It will be on the 13th because I'll be introducing the theme for 2021 on 10th. 10th of January, I'll be introducing the theme. The first is attached to it. Uh, the first will be introducing and teaching about fasting on 13th. And then we start on 14th. And then after that, uh, we're going to have a greater, greater experience all through the year as we continue with the empowerment when it's this. Is that okay? So please just make sure that you come. Uh, thank you, Praise Team St. Bartholomew Nyari, for uh, being with us today. We pray that the Lord would be a blessing to you. And we also thank God for the Praise Team St. Philip's Jericho. You know, when they started coming, They've really been a blessing to us for all those Empowerment Wednesdays. I celebrate you, the instrumentalists. I celebrate you guys. Yeah. Manu, Kagema, and Nesh. Thank you so much. Reverend Pala, thanks 
for coming through and helping me finish the two uh, last events in relation to the end time. So the reason I taught end time in the month of December is because I want you to approach Christmas with an end time mentality. Approach Christmas with an end time mentality. What I mean is this. As we celebrate the birth of Christ, the truth is he was already born and he will not be born again. So the only thing that would happen about Christ is him returning. So please, as you celebrate Christmas, at the back of your mind, celebrate it with an understanding that he really will not be born, but we are awaiting for his second coming. So celebrate Christmas with an end time mentality. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all that we've studied in relation to discovering our destiny and the exposure that we've had through scripture, reflecting through the events of the end time. We looked at the return of Christ, we looked at the rapture, we looked at the millennium, and today we've concluded with judgment. Gracious Savior, this information is to help us understand the truth and focus towards the right thing as we wait for the day of our glorification. Thank you, Jehovah Father, for all those that have been attending. I believe that every session has been a blessing to each and every one of them. We thank you for the souls that you've uh, saved in these meetings, so gracious Lord, and we keep praying that you may strengthen them in their work. We thank you, Jehovah Father, for the praise and worship team and the role that they've played, those that have been ushering, the instrumentalists that have also been uh, present here just to make our, our worship, Lord, be more lively, O oh Jehovah, and as you desire that we praise you with every ability that you've put in us, O oh God, thank you for the ministry of your word that have been equally been empowering us, O oh God. Father in heaven, as some of us, Lord, would be preparing to travel to different places for Christmas, we pray that you may grant them safety and protection as they celebrate with their families and friends. Lord God Almighty, let it be a lovely moment. And as we've said, help us not to lose focus that we always celebrate with the understanding that a day shall come when you will come for us oh god and you desire that we get ready for the same as we prepare ourselves to rule and to be with you in eternity fathers we prepare to go home we pray that you may grant us safety and protection and let each of us oh god get to our residential places safely i now pray that the peace of god which surpasses man's understanding Keep your souls and minds in the knowledge and love of God the Father and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to be with you and remain among you always. Amen. Beloved of the Lord, as you go, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen, amen, amen. So please, don't come next Wednesday. We're to Sunday. Wednesday is to Patane, 13th January. Thank you.